now please welcome to the show Inga Benson Inga welcome to the show it's good to have you here thank you Mira i'm happy to be here <laughs> Let's start with the first question. What is yoga? Yeah. So, in America, as you probably know, most people think of yoga just as asana, the physical postures. However, and I know that you do know that it's all of our conversations we've had in our classes, the science of yoga is much more vast than just the asanas. The science of yoga really has to do with how we train the mind. but it's the way that we approach the postures that trains the mind so in my lineage the primary lineage i pull upon when i work with you uh we think of asana or hatha yoga as like the calling card of yoga it invites people in but slowly the way that we work with the asana or the posture we work with ahimsa nonviolence right we try to work with satyam truthfulness and also we work with mindfulness being aware while we're practicing and you know when i'm working with you i give you subtle cues to to help you put your concentration on what you're experiencing and that's the way i teach everyone so yoga hatha yoga helps train the mind so how are our thoughts affected when we do yoga yeah so again i think it has to do with how yoga is taught In many of the classes these days it's a power yoga. So there's a lot of emphasis on challenging yourself and there's nothing wrong with that. But I try to teach yoga in a way that cultivates a observation or witness stance in relation to the thoughts. Because otherwise what happens is we identify our whole being with our thoughts, right? Most people do that. This is who I am. It's it's the ego. It's the foundation of our personality. But in order to access something deeper, we need to move into that part of ourselves. In in yoga, we also call it Shiva, the witness awareness. So, what is the connection to the breath and the universe? Yes. So, breath is often called the bridge between the body and the mind. Another amazing thing about breath, it's free. It belongs to you already, and it's available. every anywhere might as well use it exactly right it's yours you don't have to go out and find it it's already there so the thing about breathing is that when we do deeper breathing it helps to calm the nervous system now we need both parts of that right let's all, can we take a breath together <sighs> breath is incredible so is the present life connected with the past and the future might we speak about life as a continuum can you can you sure. touch on that and consciousness yeah yeah so when uh when i think about life and past present and future what it brought up for me is karma the idea of karma now almost everybody knows this because it's a very mm, let's say very popular concept by now So the classical teaching about karma is there's actually three types of karma. The one that we've already created, the one we're creating right now, and a little scary, but the karmas that are yet to come based upon actions we've taken. So, what's important to me about that is the karma we're creating right now. And that's what we have most control over. That's so that exactly. is what we should focus on. Right. Exactly. So switching a little bit. Today is International Yoga Day. Yeah. Uh what does that imply? What is that about? Sure. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, Mira, a little part of me is like, "Oh gosh, it's just yoga could become so commercial, you know." But I think it's also very good because it really brings it more and more into people's consciousness. So, June 21st is the summer solstice. Okay. It's the longest day of the year. Okay, so that's the real international yoga day. Well, June 21st is the summer solstice. Okay. And it's uh around that time that the yoga day is held, I know. So, it represents the light. 
bringing the light into our lives. Because yoga doesn't mean that any physical injuries disappear or even that mental pain vanishes like a wand. What it means is that we cultivate that awareness from which we can make purposeful choices. It is said life is yoga and yoga is life. Can you elaborate on that? Well, sure. I think it's just how we live our daily life creates who we are and what we experience. So yoga is a practice, right? Yoga is something that we can practice through how we work with the body, bringing awareness to breathing patterns and sometimes taking a deep breath as needed, and also learning to witness and train the mind. And so when we can practice those things on a daily basis, then it helps to bring that into life. Because then we are operating from a space of real awareness. Yeah, yeah. And when we are really aware, we make such better life choices. Yeah, purposeful. Yeah. Um, you are always giving me excellent life advice. Do you have some closing advice for our viewers today? I absolutely do. So yoga is really a science and again it's step by step just like anything in life that you want to practice. You have to practice it, right? Uh, one of the things in the, actually in this book Mira which I want to give you. Oh thank you so much. Because I've shared it so often in our classes. This is sort of the Bible of yoga, the Yoga Sutras. Oh, is this the one, you, the, the sutras you quote from? Yeah. My God, thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. The Yoga Sutras. I'm, I'm really going to treasure this. Yeah, thank Good. you. Use it. Thank and so really, this book, it's, it's sort of like a, a guidebook, you know? But the main thing about any map, you have to take it step by step. And you have to work on it a little bit every day. It doesn't change overnight, but with practice. So make small changes right. every day. With sincerity and with regularity, we make progress. I love it. With yeah. sincerity and regularity, yeah. we make progress. Yep, yeah, it's actually in Inga. there. Thank you so much. And thank you for being on the show. Yeah, Appreciate pleasure. it. Thank you. Thank you.